Good morning. So, uh, so my team members are going to assemble our demo, so I'm going to uh, start with some, uh, some uh, introductory information. You know, today you heard uh, a lot of discussions about, about the exciting opportunities and the, the offerings that we want to bring to market around digitization. Um, digital business, uh, intelligent assets, scalable analytics, connected services, and, and new business models were all terms that were used. Um, all of those things are really real and true opportunities for, for Rockwell Automation as well as our customers. Um, you heard on the panel today and saw in a number of the presentations uh, some examples of what those are. Uh, today, we thought we'd do something a little different at Automation Perspectives. Uh, typically, we do panels, we do presentations, we do keynotes. Um, but we thought we'd do something a little different. And so what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about how we're doing things differently inside as, as we react to these market opportunities and as we become an industrial software company. And then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate how some of those changes of how we work are impacting the products and the systems we supply to our customers. And so that's a little different for us, and so, so it should be exciting. I'm excited. I really hope it works. <laughs> <laughs> so in today's market, uh, speed and agility are, are really important. And so we've shifted our development activities accordingly. Most of our software projects today, both for new products as well as current products, um, use agile and lean development cycles. And so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what that is and why that's important. Um, because what we saw is both in new teams and existing teams is we saw significant productivity, both in the form of time to market as well as quality as we introduced those new products. And what we saw happen is we saw them become more meaningful to customers earlier in their life cycles. And so these new agile methodologies, things like build, measure, and learn, are processes that we use today and take advantage of, of some key elements. And the, the first big element is having the code run sooner in the development process. And so that, that seems a little intuitive, but you say, okay, so what do you do with that? And, and well, what that allows us to do is get that code, that product, in front of customers sooner. And the sooner we can get that product in front of a customer, the sooner we can get feedback. The sooner we get that feedback, the more we can iterate. And then hopefully in the end, as we introduce that product to market, it's more meaningful for the folks who are using it. And so that's the general concept. So having code run earlier allows you to get a better product into market faster. Many of the things that we're going to show you today are relatively complex. If you look under the hood, um, there's a lot of capabilities there. And when you talk about complexity, um, you know, there's a real risk. And so one of the things that we've been trying very hard to do for our customers is simplify. Simplify workflows, simplify their ease of use, how they access the product and how they use the product out of the box. And so at Automation Fair tomorrow, in the innovation booth, we have a number of new products, but we also have our usability teams there conducting usability studies. So I'd, I'd encourage you to stop by uh, because they're on kind of a non-traditional way of, of doing business and development. Visualization has always been important in automation, at least for the last, say, two or three decades. Uh, it's kind of your window into the system. It's how we interact with the automation environment. And so mobility has become important because it allows you to enter that window from anywhere at any time. And so over the last several years, you've seen us bring mobility solutions to market um, on our interface panels, our HMIs, and our information solutions. Um, and you'll see all those things when you go out on the floor tomorrow. Most recently, we brought our batch mobile offering out. And that's interesting and important for our process offering and our process customers. And so you'll see this constant stream of mobility solutions. Uh, and you'll see some of that today in the demonstrations. So, so hopefully you've also heard, and I, I think it was mentioned two or three times, uh, the purchase of ACP. Uh, I, think, I think Blake said it well, and so did Fran. It's really a way for us to s accelerate mobility solutions and security into our customers with our current offerings or into their current facilities. And so you'll see more of that out on the floor as well. As Fran mentioned, it's sprinkled around. So our focus in automation has always been about productivity. You heard that time and time again today. And so we want our customers to be more productive. And that allows us to drive more value for them. And so we want them to be more productive wherever they are with whatever they're doing, whatever device they're using, or any infrastructure they have. And you heard Scott talk about the importance of infrastructure. And so that's really what our most recent mobility project is about. We call it internally Project Stanton. It's really a, a simple new iOS app 
also works on Android, that's focused at mobility, but, but it's really focused at team productivity, and we hope to demonstrate that for you today. And so we think that's a new opportunity for our customers, and we think it's a new, new business for the market. So to help describe this new collaboration tool, I want to bring up our mobility lead, Kyle Reisner, and he's going to come up and help me do the demonstration. Kyle and his team are the folks who have built the application for us, and uh, we've got a few of those here today. So Kyle, welcome. Thanks, Frank. Good to be here. All right. Thanks. Well, the team has been really hard at work for the last, really, 18 months building this new product, and, and we're glad to be here and honored to be here to show everyone today. So, uh, so we had a conversation about 18 months ago about analytics and about mobility and kind of challenged a number of teams, um, Kyle's team on mobility, uh, Mike's team on analytics, uh, to come up with solutions that were meaningful to our customers. And so, you know, Kyle, the, the real solution for us is how we drive more productivity for the customer. And if we can do that in a way where we simplify the workflows, there'll be a lot of value for the customer. That's right. And really, we attacked the task that you, you gave us around focusing on personas to drive value while people are at work. So I'll go through a little bit, and don't go too far, because we're going to dive into the demo. Really I'm, I'm right here for you. I'm All just right. going to get out of the way. OK. So Project Santon was so two minutes ago. Since our keynote at TechEd and Fran's uh, presentation about 20 minutes ago, we moved to a real product. And we're happy to announce today that that's called Factory Talk Team One. The name Factory Talk Team One is very emblematic of really what our primary goal is. Productivity for teams all in one nice, easy to use app. It's really one new experience. So let's show off what we can be able to do. And for Frank, let's grab our phones and you can help me out. Okay, Kyle, that's great. So this is where it gets interesting. <laughs> Everybody enjoy. So, uh, so I have an Apple iPhone and we're running the Team One application. That's right. So you can see on the left, we're going to be uh, going into the, uh, to the Team One app. And now the real world setting is that Frank and I are inside the plant using Team One for our daily activities. This app is specifically designed to improve our productivity while people are at work. And inside the app, Frank and I have already joined and downloaded, uh, downloaded the app and joined the same team. And what Frank's going to do is message me and say, check out Machine 12. OK, so, uh, so you can create teams in Team 1, which makes a lot of sense. And so Kyle and I are in the same team. And so I'm going to go into the chat app. And I'm going to send a note uh, to Kyle that says, check out Machine 12. And we're going to send that. All right, so I get the message from Frank, and I want to provide him more context to the problem because obviously he's prompted me to go check out Machine 12. So within Team 1, I not only get the, uh, the text from Frank, but I can switch to another module we call the Incident Module. And inside this Incident Module, I can create a new incident for Machine 12. I can simply say what the product's uh, in the cabinet about, and there's a yellow light. I can additionally add an attachment. I'll take a photo of you guys in the crowd. You can see my prompters. <laughs> Didn't realize that before. Yeah. All maybe, right. Maybe aim high. I aim higher next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. OK, so then I'm going to send that contextualized inquiry back to Frank via the chat module. So what the app does is synchronizes up to the Factsock Cloud, sends it back down to Frank securely. Right. And so, so I go into the chat module. I get a message from Kyle. I actually get a notification, so I can just click on the notification. That comes up, and Kyle's talking about the, the uh, stack light. And what's, what's interesting to that is I see that it's yellow, and that means there's a cautionary flag. Something's in warning, right? It's not necessarily faulted yet, uh, but it's in warning. And so, so I send a note back. After I acknowledge that, I send that back to Kyle and I say, what's the speed of the drive? Question mark. I get it. <laughs> it the autocorrect worked a little bit. So 
With Team 1, I can access this. Yellow, yellow bad, green good. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> so with Team 1, I can access this drive securely via a local wireless network. You see their drive over here, Real PowerFlex 525. We got a couple here with an Aloe Valley Stratus wireless switch that's specifically designed to operate within industrial environments. Right. Yeah, that's important to note is this is a live little automation system we have there. Right. Live demos require live hardware. Right. So what it, the app itself has a server, a database, and a sync engine inside of it. And this is a huge innovation Microsoft helped us on to reduce the friction for teams to realize the demo we're showing today. The app is a smart node. It isn't some client to a server. This drive is not connected to the internet. I'm directly connecting to it over this wireless network. So what I'm going to do is you asked me for the trend. I'm going to simply navigate into my trend module. I'm going to select the drive that is configured in team one, and I'm going to go down to parameter 15, the output RPM. And what it's doing is doing a live trend of the open RPM, and if Mike Wilson, our lead developer, can come over here and actually turn on the motor, you'll see the live trend actually move. So we think this is really important way, a really important way to reduce the friction for people to realize this value. And all they need is the app to do this. So in the collaboration spirit in Team 1, I will post this back to a module we call the Team Board. So it's not just for Frank, it's for everyone on my team. So in the Team Board, I'm going to attach the trend output RPM and post it to my Team Board. And everyone on my team can now see it. So I opened up the Team Board, and I selected the trend that Kyle posted. And we can see it uh, start to trend there up on the screen as the data comes in to the app. Now, knowing a little something about drives, I'd say we have kind of some major issues there with that, uh, <laughs> that speed profile. But, but it's just a demo, right? <laughs> so <laughs> so, uh, so that's, that's pretty neat, Kyle. And, and what we're trying to demonstrate here is that um, through this collaborative tool, somebody that has domain expertise can support a team member who might not have that same experience or have seen an incident like that before. And you can do that very quickly, very collaboratively, and, and get the information you need to make decisions. Absolutely. And these different modules in Team 1 are really a key part of the whole experience, the integrated experience of the connected enterprise. Each module has a specific function, and Team 1 brings them all together in a new experience for our users. It's really the first industrial app on the market to mix human entered information with device data in such a frictionless and instant way. So in addition, the app can be used completely offline, and when it has a connection, it syncs. So the incidents and the posts that we've seen that Frank and I went back and forth on, they get stored locally, and then when there's a connection, there is, uh, they synchronize. But live data is always just live data. We keep them separated for designing this app to be hardened in industrial secure settings, and that's really what we've heard from our customers. Wireless connectivity is always spotty, and they want privacy uh, is paramount. So, so this is important. So Kyle, let me, let me repeat that. So Team One uh, doesn't require any special corporate IT policies. Right. Uh, think of the panel discussion we had earlier. Uh, the automation data, the live data that's in Team One doesn't leave when the worker leaves the plant. That's right. Okay. And Team One uh, gets at the data but doesn't connect to the automation devices themselves so there's no unintended connections. That's right. So it doesn't Im impact the automation environment. We've absolutely done that. And it's really important for us to look at how we differentiate building this from the ground up to accommodate not only our customers, but just general industrial policies. Well, well those things are really important. And, and I think you know, customers want to take advantage of mobility, but they're always worried about the risk. And we've heard that several times today. But if we've addressed those three things, I think we've taken several steps to addressing that risk the customers perceive. Absolutely, absolutely. So in addition to what Frank just mentioned, it's really about Team One not requiring no servers, no pre-bought software required to install and run. All you need is your device and the app to get started. And it's not only frictionless from a delivery and technical standpoint, what you've seen just now is available today. We turned it on last night and you can download it now. And I downloaded it this morning. <laughs> you might have had a couple versions prior. <laughs> yes, I did. 
And we're reducing the friction to zero by giving away for free Team One with eight modules today. And it's available for Apple and Android. So, so Kyle, you mentioned that uh, Team One can be downloaded today, either Apple or Android. Mm -hmm. What about, what's next for Team One? Well, our team is hard at work figuring out what we really want to do next, and we're already, we came to the show with some previews of what we intend to do next. So what we're gonna do in the app is we're gonna to swipe to the second page, and we reveal a couple more modules. The one we're gonna focus in on is our alarms module. And inside this alarm module, it securely connects to a factory talk alarm and events server, and we've wrapped it in a secure and in, in, in modern way, and it provides a simple list of what the alarms are. As you can see here, on the system, they have 15 total alarms. But in team one, the foundational component is team collaboration. So I can now send this alarm, this high-speed alarm to Frank, and he receives the alarm, he opens the alarm, and he sees the alarm details. This is really our first step into alarm integration inside the factory floor to multiple users in a collaborative way. So, so Kyle, I opened the alarm module, and I, I opened up the, the alarm that you sent me, and I can see all the, the details about it. Um, you know, I think, I think the value of that is clear. Um, it's a day-to-day -day activity in any production environment to manage your alarms and events. And so to do that in a, in a remote way um, where you get notified of the event instead of having to be at a council, I think, is a great productivity opportunity. Absolutely, absolutely. And we intend to really bring more and more functions to Team One as we develop and release this product. We believe really Team One Free Edition is really great at reducing mean time to repair when maintenance people are at work instantly. And then they, th then they can subscribe to an offering we're coming out with in the early part of next year called Team One Standard, which will open up the alarm module. And as we learn more and more from our customers and we iterate, per Frank's mention of the build, measure, learn cycle, we consistently iterate and add to the product as we learn of usage and research from our customers. To that point, we've been running a preview for the last two months with about 500 customers, and we've learned a ton. If you actually look at the release notes in today's app update, you'll see that we incorporate a lot of updates from those preview users. So, so this kind of goes into that, that, uh, that new design process we talked about earlier where we get instant feedback and then can incorporate that continuously into the builds. Absolutely, it's a paramount thing for new products and new value that we're bringing to market to continuously learn. In addition, looking forward into later next year, we intend to create a software development kit to enable other internal Rockwell businesses to create modules and content and expand that to our partners in due course. Well, obviously uh, other business is important, but our partner network is so strong, that's, that's a really big deal. Absolutely. You know, Kyle, that was a, that was a great demo and it actually went really well. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, so thanks again uh, for all the hard work. Thanks for the demo and uh, give my best to your team and thanks for being with us. Thanks, today. Frank, appreciate it. Okay, so what do you think? Pretty interesting capabilities? All right, told you it'd be something different. Um, but, but we have more, so let's continue our innovation journey and look at an example of scalable analytics. You heard that term several times today. So scalable analytics is about using the right information at the right place at the right time to create value. And so we want to help our customers always make good business decisions and help them produce real business outcomes. You heard that as well this morning. And so we believe using information for better decision making at all levels of that information architecture is an opportunity for better business outcomes. And so by accessing the information, utilizing scalable analytics, we can affect real-time control and information. And we can make decisions when and where they have an impact to produce those outcomes. So, so next, I'd like to bring up Mike Pianolino. Mike is the team lead for a challenge we, we made to get, create a scalable analytics product and bring rapid value to the market. So Mike, why don't you come up and join me? Hey, thanks. thanks, Frank. So, first time's a charm. <laughs> it's been
especially for the demos and for me. But uh, I'm really happy to be here to represent the team. And you know, this challenge of having immediate value in a product that's around scalable analytics, it's a, it's a tall order. I mean, almost as tall as you. But uh, the, uh, in fact, you know, what's important here is to have specific product offerings for our specific customers. Yeah, I think so, Mike. You know, one of our most important customers is OEMs or original equipment manufacturers. Uh, we've been supplying products and services and solutions to OEMs for years, um, but, but they're facing uh, different challenges. They're, they're trying to figure out how to differentiate their offerings, uh, not only their machines, but, but create new business models like after-sales services. You know, these, these things can be important ways not only for them to differentiate themselves, but also drive new revenue streams. Absolutely. And our OEM customers are so important, we're here to show off a brand new product called Factory Talk Analytics for Machines. OEMs can now embed a gateway into the machine that they make. And once commissioned, the data flows securely by being able to take select information from specific controllers and sent to our Factory Talk cloud. And then the information is gathered and presented to our OEMs in the form of dashboards. So they have real-time information, actionable information, where they can access this. And they didn't have to do any cloud coding, they didn't have to do any type of dashboard development, that was all done for them. And in case they want different data logged or different screens made, we have our connected services teams there to customize their experience. That's great, so we're taking our, our domain expertise and combining that with this new technology to provide that value to the customer. Absolutely. And in fact, here you can see the screens. This shows off the new product. It shows an individual machine, uh, OEM's uh, machines, and you can get a quick high-level view of the status and see where these machines are deployed. So, so it's a great global view, Mike, um, but can we get any better resolution, like maybe machine <laughs> performance or readiness or material consumption? Absolutely, so we can actually dig deeper, and you can see here through these intuitive dashboards, we can get information like across the top, the uh, time and state for the last 24 hours. We can take a look and see the mean time between different types of states that they have, the number of widgets or products that they've made. Um, you can also see the top events that have occurred and other, uh, several other calculated KPIs. You know, Mike, this, this product is a great example of using that domain expertise to drive simplification for the customers. You know, the OEM gets a clear view of how their asset is, is performing. Um, they don't need their technolo a technology team of their own to stand up a cloud, um, but they can still offer a new level service for their customers. Yeah, absolutely. And this will be sold as a subscription, generally available in the first quarter of 2017, and you'll see it on the show floor this week. So, so here and now. Here and now. You know, Mike, I spoke about uh, scalable analytics, and, and you gave the, the example of the, uh, the cloud application, but what are we doing for folks inside the plant, and more specifically, um, for folks who aren't comfortable or familiar with what they can do with analytics? Well, again, another tough challenge, but and I've got this for a little bit, but I'm gonna need you for a demo. I'm, I'm here, again, <laughs> right here. Okay, absolutely. And so, we see that at system level analytics, or even at the enterprise, the most atomic unit are things, or these devices that we have and things in the industrial internet of things, really, we make smart things already. And they're about to get smarter with what we're about to show you. But before I get there, I'd like to draw a consumer product analogy that comes to mind when we think of smart things. My wife and I both use fitness trackers, and the experience that you have with these devices is not raw data like you see here, where all the bulk of the, the effort is on me to, to gain insight about what's actually happening. And it's not even a simple graph that you actually get, uh, that you interact with, where the data has been transformed and it does provide a little bit more value. And I can't answer a couple more basic questions, like say what time of day I was a little bit more active. But outside of that, it's still challenging to answer more questions and gain insight. But instead, my experience is like what you see here on the dashboard. Easy to read, analytics have been applied, the data has been shaped, and so I can glance at it and see how things are actually performing. You know, Mike, I. I, I understand the example of the fitness tracker, and in fact, it looks like it's working for you. Um, but how about a, uh, Mike and I have a special relationship. <laughs> but, but how about a real world example in industrial automation? Absolutely, you'd be surprised what a vest uh, covers up. But uh, 
in a similar fashion, we're really about to make um, our, uh, we're about to make it easier for us to use our own smart devices. Take our PowerFlex 755, for example. It has hundreds of onboard calculations happening about the health and the status of that particular device. But what if we could get the information off of that device automatically, store it, transform it, and perform the analytics as the data streams in? It turns out we know so much about these devices, we can do that. And without any work from the customer, and make it available and simplify the experience, make it so consumable that you can just access it via a web browser or via Team One. And we're gonna host this device uh, level analytics product on our new scalable compute options. We're starting out with deploying it on our VersaView 5400, and you can actually see it running over there in the front of our demo case. And let's take a look at where this new product, Factory Talk Analytics for Devices, is right now. And so this appliance didn't know anything of our little network that we're running over here. But um, as soon as it booted up, it was able to go out and discover all the Ethernet IP devices that were in that case and generate the list that you see on the left-hand side of the screen. But we're gonna go further than that. And we're gonna actually do more detailed analytics. On the right-hand side of the screen, you can see that the data is being contextualized. Real analysis is happening. And we're able to do a diagnostic assessment. And this is all automatically created for me. I didn't do any dashboard development to, do, to get to this stage. But we aren't gonna stop there. When, it, when something happens that you should know about, we're gonna make sure that the information meets you wherever you are. And so we're not gonna send you just do something alerts, we're gonna send you specific actions to take by codifying our knowledge and our manuals in what we call action cards. And we're gonna learn what's important to you. And so, Frank, you can help, uh, help us show off here. Um, he's gonna grab his phone, and I'm gonna it. switch over. And so, what Frank's doing is he's gonna go inside of Team One, he's gonna go over to his analytics module, and you can see the action cards that have been created for, for, uh, for Frank from the analytics appliance itself. And so, he can look at those things, interact with them, and he can actually vote or uh, down or vote up these devices and we'll learn about what's important to Frank. So he swiped right and said that this is important to me and he swiped left and said this isn't important to me and if he swipes left enough, we'll stop sending him information about that particular device. You know, Mike, understanding the information about the intelligent assets that we have um, is great, um, but automation systems are, are just that, they're systems. What about how the devices interact? Well, good question. And although we're focused on devices, we're starting to build up knowledge of the relationships between these things. So we're starting to learn about the systems they belong to. And we're performing a higher level of analysis. By looking at the relationships, we can learn what seems like simplistic items, but which is terribly hard to diagnose one at a time. And in fact, if we look over at our daily system feed from the product, you can see where we've been able to determine something that's been misconfigured on the network. You know, Mike, um, isn't much of this technology, um, or at least the data available in the system today, and, and why do you think this is gonna make a difference? Well, the data is available today, but think of the coding it would take to take all that information, get it, store it, analyze it, put it into something that's usable, and create all the graphics. Well, we're doing that automatically for the customer already. We're doing this and improving productivity and, in, and improving mean time between failure. So I understand, so you're eliminating all of the design work that that would have been required and all the uniqueness of every system and machine that they have. Exactly, and, and again, I think it's, uh, it's, it's an important thing that all of this stuff is absolutely happening automatically. So, so, uh, so now that we've, uh, we've kind of talked about that, why don't, we, uh, why don't we demonstrate how that works within the Team One environment? Yeah, absolutely, and in fact, Frank and I are gonna show you uh, a brand new modern way that we're gonna interact with analytics. So Frank's gonna get into his phone, I'm gonna get into mine, and you can see I'm gonna go into my analytics app, yep. and I'm going to be able to actually chat with my analytics appliance. So I can go in and say, let's see here, how many devices? Thank you, autocorrect, R online. And you can see it came back and told me exactly what I needed to know. 
Okay. So Frank, you can give it a try. Okay, so here's the, the, the analytics app, and I go over to chat, and I say, how many drives need maintenance? And I send that. And it comes back immediately with the response. <laughs> Shelby doesn't know the answer, but hopes too soon. <laughs> well, I was hoping it'd be a little more value than that, but, uh, but I, I, I get the idea. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, we get it. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, we uh, purposely turned off the autocorrect on Frank's. But um, the... Uh, <laughs> but the real, the real thing here is that you're not only able to collaborate with your peers, but you're a actually able to collaborate with your analytics uh, appliance that's over there. So, it, it, and the, the important part here is that if you're not staring at a dashboard, you want to be able to get a quick view of how things are going, you can just go ahead, open up your mobile app, and chat with the actual device. So, uh, so, so Mike, um uh, you mentioned there was a few other things you wanted to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. There's two other things that I wa want to show that, that we think are also impressive, if you've got the time. Well, I only hesitate because it's you and I between them at lunch. <laughs> but, uh, but why and, don't we... and our track record is about 50-50 with the demo so far, so yeah. Why don't uh, we move through it? Um, but, you know, when we talked about device-level analytics, it's really at the most fundamental level. But what could happen if we take device-level analytics and are able to aggregate it up with other system-level information? Amazing things can happen. And if you look at the screen that you see behind me, you can see Power BI. We're expanding the relationship that we have with Microsoft, and we're able to take this information from our Factory Talk Analytics for Devices product. At the same time, we're able to take data from our Factory Talk uh, MES product, Factory Talk Production Center. You know, Mike, it's, it's exciting to see because it's, it's kind of endless. Uh, what you can do is if you combine all the sources of enterprise data, um, offers new opportunities for productivity, better quality, and, and improved profitability. Um, and you mentioned earlier, though, you had one more thing you wanted to show us. Um, do we need Team One again for that? Well, no, we don't need Team One. I mean, we all need Team One now available in your app stores, but we don't need it for this part of the demo. Um, in fact, um, we're actually prototyping uh, a new layer of interaction, and uh, the bot that we've had uh, inside of our appliance, the team has called Shelby. So, and so, so remember that, uh, that mistype? Right? For folks like me? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I think that was the setup, folks. Okay, here we go. Ask Shelby. There is one Shelby online. Go ahead and ask it a question. What is the status of my operation? Shelby is currently monitoring six devices. All of the devices are online, and there are two devices that need maintenance. Ask another. How many controllers are faulted? There are currently no controllers that are faulted. Ask another. No. Okay. okay. So, Talk later. Goodbye. So, that, so that's pretty cool, Mike, right? So especially for somebody like me. Right? <laughs> that might, you know, fat finger something occasionally. Yeah, just yeah. occasionally, yeah. right? And so can I try? A a absolutely. Ask Shelby. There is one Shelby online. Go ahead and ask it a question. Which drive needs maintenance? Here is the drive that needs maintenance. PowerFlex 525. Ask another. Hmm. Can you order pizza for lunch? I'm sorry, Frank. Uh. I'm afraid I can't do that. <laughs> ask another. OK, so it, it can't help me with everything. <laughs> so that's a great practical example, Mike of something we can integrate into our environment, right, that brings analytics made simple and accessible to life. Absolutely, and another good practical example of what we're doing with our device level analytics is the fact that we've got a beta program running, again, using that build, measure, learn cycle that we talked about earlier. And so we have a customer, Great Lakes Brewing Company, who's been part of our beta program for a little bit, and they were running our analytics appliance, and then they were able to uh, discover over 100 devices and generate 23 action cards with just minutes of runtime. And they were able to actually use the appliance to diagnose some minor math faults on a controller, some issues with their drives, and they were able to find a device that was constantly renegotiating the network settings. 
you know, that's great news, Mike, especially so early in that beta program. And remember, we talked about those new processes we're using. It's great that you can actually show customer value and the experience we're gonna get out of that is just gonna improve the product so much. Yeah. Helps the team tremendously to uh, complete that loop. Yeah, well, I'm excited about the analytics modules. And so I think the team has done a great job and I appreciate you coming up and joining me today. Absolutely, thanks. thanks. Mike. Okay, I'd, I'd like to thank Mike and Kyle and their teams. Uh, the folks, they did a great job. Maybe give them a round of applause. And of course, I'd, I'd like to thank all of you for being here today at Automation Perspectives. Hopefully you enjoyed the presentations, um, uh, the discussion topics, as well as the demonstrations we just did.